for the for the actual reference. Um, what I did also is provide a grid for the composition, just to again indicate where my center of my drawing is, which is right around here. Added a horizontal line and again divided it into parallel vertical lines that run through. Also xed out each of these four squares to, to again. Um, indicate how wide and how tall each of my uh, squares would be. And I'm actually going to do the same thing on the drawing. Now, usually I want to do this with ink, but just in order to get my composition uh, down, I want to be able to get everything proportionally correct. You can use a high H pencil meaning a 6H, a 5H, or even a 4H pencil, graphite pencil. And the reason why is because then if you go back and erase, it's a lot easier to erase those pencil marks before you use your ink. Okay. Uh, any questions about that so far? Nope. Perfect. Um, and what I've also done, again, is I pulled up the preview um, image on preview, and I just, you know, went to my tool section, adjust the color, and right around here, I was able to change the uh, saturation of the color. So notice I made it fully black and white. Again, you can have fun with this by, by changing the saturation. You could also change the temperature. You want a warmer? Do you want a cooler? Uh, depending on whether or not if you want to be able to make some changes. You could also change the contrast, right? You can change the intensities of contrast. But if I uh, make this sort of um, image uh, less uh, in terms of its contrast, you can start to see it almost becomes grayed out like a blurry image. And But it's actually much more easier to see than I can start to look and understand how my grid is in relationship to the composition so I can see if it's pretty accurate. Um, it's not pretty accurate, but it's roughly around a, a pretty good scale. I can also just move this slightly and yeah, it's pretty good. And I need to make this adjustment here. But I'm, again, these are little things I wanna be able just to be mindful for so I don't make any mistakes uh, later throughout the drawing. But then I also wanna be able then to go back if I wanna uh, add in a little bit more, add a little bit less or make some you know edits throughout the, throughout the drawing itself. And I'm just gonna raise this a lot higher so it can, mat it can meet right in there and that little uh you know green icon is a really good sort of uh cursor to see where things are, are adding up and matching up on the drawing i can start to see here i need to also lower this slightly because obviously that's a lot too high but i need also need to make that pretty straight so it's right around there okay Move that over there um and again just sort of figuring out like the ends of my composition in terms of the image and if I want to make any altercations, I could. I need to do this now. You really want to be able to do this before you actually start. Again, just being mindful of the image. You don't want to work too much uh, on this process to kind of make it difficult. A lot of students have that question whether or not if they can uh, use pencil just to draw out the composition first. Um, I'm going to say yes for the sake of the assignment because usually it does take some time, but really the main purpose with this assignment is to think really loosely as well as to not worry too much about the details. Uh, part of that process, which also means to create your preliminary drawings um, when you turn in your completed drawings by the end of next week on Monday before the critique due date would be to review the lecture and review the timed uh, drawings that we've done uh, prior for the, even for the still life. Uh, we're going to do the same thing with the ink wash uh, landscapes. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to slightly actually change my contrast slightly higher to run about here. And I'm actually going to uh, lower down the, uh, not the temperature, excuse me, the uh, saturation to right about here. And I can start to even play with this even further. You can start to see, like, I want to get a nice rich black. So in the middle here, it wasn't too black in terms of color, uh, in terms of the shadows, I want to make it a little bit darker. So right about, I would say right about there. And I, you know, I want to evaluate and see, okay, how does that look? Okay. Am I happy with that? I think I'm pretty happy with that. And the reason why I want to give that sort of optical illusion of depth 
in terms of a, a flat surface, but also indicating to sort of showcase the middle ground, foreground, and background through my atmospheric perspective, which is a part of this assignment. Okay. Any questions so far? I'm going to save that. Okay. Now I'm going to stop screen sharing on that end. And I'm also going to now pin the video. I think I've already, have I pinned this video already? Yes. Okay. So what you're seeing here, again, I have my uh, ink materials ready to go. I do have both options, both the Simi ink and then India ink here. I do have a smaller brush, right? The bamboo brush as well as a larger brush. I do have a glass container here, okay? You can start to see this was used for ink from previous quarters. Uh, you can use any glass container if you want. You could use a plastic container. You could use uh, whatever is um, either recyclable or um, uh, washable, okay? So I like to use a little bit of the glass and notice it's a transparent glass. So it's not a sort of another sort of glass like here where I have a frosted glass. Now, this is important to sort of indicate because I want to be able to see inside my containers, right? So the more drops of ink I add into both containers, and then I dilute it with the water. So there's some water here in this container. I need to be mindful of that, okay? Again, my blue painter's tape, which is your best friend in this process. A lot of students are always wondering, why is my paper buckling? Why is it moving? Why is it kind of changing its shape? on the surface of the drawing paper. Uh, the tape is there as a guide, but also as a really helpful tool to actually uh, keep a flat surface on your drawing. So if, you, if it, your drawing starts to move, if it starts to kind of get too difficult to manage, remember just to use your blue painter's tape on a flat surface, okay? I have a flat surface I'm working on, obviously, uh, for the drawing not to move or actually make any uh, changes within its um, position. Uh, it's also actually really helpful to just be mindful when you're working on your drawings, remember to allow it to dry for your multiple layers that you will add throughout the uh, time working on the on the drawing, but then then going back away, waiting for it to fully dry for an, uh, within about a few minutes or probably an hour uh, before you add your second layer. Okay, and we'll put that into practice. Any questions before we start? You guys can hear me, correct? <laughs> yeah, we can hear you. Perfect. All righty. So what I'm going to do now is start off with understanding my materials. OK. So let me just make sure. How is the lighting? Is this pretty good or is this better? Is that better or worse? Okay, this is off. This is on. I think on is a little brighter. Okay, so is that better or worse though, in terms of viewing? This is off. This is on. Which one do you guys think? You guys can choose. This is off. This is on. I think it's fine if it's on, unless someone else um, okay. has a, a different opinion. Okay. Does anybody object? Should I turn it off? Okay. No objections. So again, for the demos, I'm going to use the India just for the sake of this preliminary drawing. But I also, again, part of this drawing, uh, you would actually need some paper towel. Again, ink is a very sort of fluid process, meaning we're going to have multiple uh, attempts to applying our ink onto our surface of our papers. But what I want to do is have some paper towels nearby. So if there's any spills, any damages, any leakage on the surface of the paper, or if it goes on my counter, I can quickly pick it up with my ink. Okay. I like to fold paper towel in half and use this as like almost like an armrest. So if you want to rest your arm directly, okay, you can then 
be able then to, to sort of hold your brush this way and you can move it around and so it doesn't actually um, rub on the surface of your paper and then you can start to actually blend in some of those uh, values okay any questions about that nope okay now what i do have here is a sort of just again a very basic uh rectangular uh grid that i just made on my uh paper on my strathmore paper and what i'm gonna do is again just to sort of practice with the ink i do have my uh, about three inch uh, wide diameter uh, container and i like the fact that it has a wide base so i can really get to see on that surface i'm going to just remember just to shake make sure my container is closed fully closed okay so it doesn't leak just get a good, a good shake in there get a few seconds and start to open it and just be very gentle okay and this is a droplet, so meaning that the ink itself will come uh, will actually come out either by the container directly or through a droplet. Uh, uh, method so you can start to see you can add you can start adding some drops so i'm going to add probably one. Actually, to just keep it to one I want to see how we can stretch out where the, how far the the one will go okay. I'm gonna have, I have some water here in this small little container. I'm gonna add about a ratio of 90% water, 10% ink. And hopefully that does it, okay. And the first thing I'm gonna do is again, I'm just gonna move, move my container around. You could also take your, your actual brush, okay. And I like to have a container nearby, okay, filled with some water where I can be then, then apply directly on, um, take my clean brush, you know, dilute it with, or excuse me, clean it, wash it with some water. So I have it ready to go. So it's loaded up with some water. And then I will then again, be able then to go over here and mix my actual one drop in uh, water mixture here. Okay, I'm gonna let that rest for a second. You could take your bigger brush here and then just drop it in my container of clean water. And this will be sort of where, if you think about it in the terms of like keeping this method of a clean brush uh, strategy, I would recommend just holding a container nearby so you could just drop in your brush. So when you use it, you can then just clean it off. You know, take some paper towels, for example, again blot it and you can then reuse it again directly. So all that ink comes off. Uh, we'll put that into practice a little bit later on. Uh, but again, this is just sort of keeping the, the method of your brushes clean. I do have another container here, just in case. Uh, I could also fill this up with water. And part of that process is also too, just to have multiple containers of water so you don't cross contaminate um, your ratios of ink to water in each container so for example we had one ink one droplet of ink in this container no ink in this container and there's nothing in here okay uh, but then if let's say for example if i used all three containers this was one drop this was five drops and the other one was uh, 10 drops i will then actually keep that a record and keep a record of the, how much uh, ink i added so i don't make any uh, mistakes uh, and a part of that is again just developing value okay now again in this in this process i'm just sort of figuring out the ratio okay now i can hold my container here on an angle okay and all of the water then uh, by gravity drops down on this sort of pool of uh, the base of the container i could then use my brush and i can start to see the more and more i'll start to blot it all the ink will be on there. And sometimes I like to actually blot uh, my brush first before I apply it directly on the paper. And just because I can then see and examine the value and say, how dark is that? Is that pretty gray? Is that pretty black? Is that pretty light, depending on uh, the value that I want? And within that, then you'll be able then to sort of start to see those uh, differences between them. So for my first swatch, I'm just gonna, again, just kind of really, have some fun, just make a 
really sort of standard rectangular value, okay? And I need to then now understand, so that's about one drop of water, okay? Before I add another drop to this container, I need to remember that I need to also remember to keep this dry, okay? So while that's drying, I can then, you know, um, whether if you want to use, like I've seen a lot of students actually use blow dryers. Um, students would bring in blow dryers in the studios and, you know, start to blow dry their, uh, their drawings so they can work faster. You don't have to necessarily do that. I like to take a paper towel and just kind of like hover around over it and just kind of move it around left and right, just so kind of, so it can dry faster, get a nice breeze in here. And I'm going to let that sit for a second. Okay. And now I'm going to take my same container and I'm going to actually add another droplet of ink. Okay. Am I going too fast guys? I think you're fine. Okay. So I added another droplet of ink there. And I'm not actually, I'm actually not going to add any more water. I'm just actually going to just mix in with my smaller brush that ink or that uh, second drop of ink. Okay. And then I again always want to take my paper towel and just blot it. And that's sort of an, an idea in terms of that ratio of how it now gets a little bit darker. But then now, and I'm sort of, uh, depending if I'm happy with that, I'll then add a swatch of this color. And again, I just want to be really mindful not to go over that swatch that I made first. But notice like some of the pools of water, like you'll start to see like all the pile pools of water on the surface start to pile up. Just take your brush while it's still wet and start adding, you know, larger brush strokes so it doesn't dry uneven, okay? And I'm gonna allow that to dry. Any questions so far, guys? And you can start to see what a big difference that is, right? from that sort of beginning value to the second. And I'm just gonna keep going and just add a, another drop. So then we can remember how many drops did it take to get a pure black? You don't wanna add too much ink in these process, okay? You wanna slowly, gradually take your time, okay? And start adding your ink really with a sort of a patient um, manner because you don't want to rush this process. Okay. Just want to really get in there, get all that mixed in. Just want to make sure, again, what's my rule of thumb? Take my paper towel, take it right next to that swatch and I'll start to see how dark, you can start to see it gets darker. That's perfect. But before I actually apply that swatch, I'll take the other paper towel and just kind of hover over that swatch, making sure it's dry. Not fully dry, but dry enough so it doesn't bleed over this swatch to this swatch to the next swatch. Okay. Again, not adding any more water because that's more than enough. So then now, I can start adding more. And I also need to remember that this dries a lot differently once I apply each swatch, okay? You can start to see that there's a pool of water on the bottom. Now I need to be careful not to bleed each swatch. So there's a bit of a gap there, which is fine. But then I'll then remember to indicate that that was one drop, two drop, three drops, 
and so on and so forth. And if I start to touch this first swatch, just being very careful, it's now it's dry. So I can then be able then to go back and add another layer if I wanted to, okay? But then now I'm gonna add a fourth drop. I'm just gonna uh, repeat this process, okay? Okay. So I have my, my drop in there. And I can start to almost feel the consistency of my water being a little bit thicker, like it feels thicker on the brush. It wasn't so easy and fluid when I was uh, mixing in the beginning with my first drop. You can start to have almost, a, there's like sort of a slight resistance if you start to move the, the brush on the bottom of the container. Again, I'm just gonna mix that in there. Let's get a nice sort of even consistency. But then again, before I do that, I'm just gonna wave my paper towel. Just make sure that's fully dry. Okay, perfect. Again, rule of thumb, what do I do next? Take my paper towel. There you go, okay. And that's a good enough swatch, which is pretty dark. Start adding that on here. Now this is getting a bit closer to the uh, value that I had before, but I have to really think about how much or how large are my brush strokes in relationship to each swatch. And again, I just want to gradually take my time. And you want to be able to do this throughout the drawing and then really understand that changing the viscosity or the thickness or thinness of the swatch really can make a big difference uh, in my container. So if I'm changing the, the viscosity of the ink by adding more, adding less. I'm really getting a sort of a general idea of like, okay, this is how dark I can get before I start my drawing. Okay. Does that make sense so far? That's a big jump, right? But now if I start to add, I'm going to add actually five drops for the last swatch. That's one, two, Three, get more ink on there. Four, five. I'm just going to move my. So I have now five more drops in my last swatch. This is just because I'm going to sort of jump ahead to actually get a nice dark before I get a rich black. Okay. Again, rule of thumb, take my paper towel. There's a big difference there, okay? So I need to be mindful of this. So take my time. But again, what am I gonna do? Just take my paper towel, hover over, that swatch, making sure that gets drier. Okay, you don't have to spend too much time on that, drawing it. But then now, if I move my paper slightly so you can start to see the last swatch, now you can start to see a really big jump for that rich sort of value. Any questions so far, guys? And again, while it's still wet, I just want to bit, then kind of, kind of blend in all of those areas. Okay. 
notice like depending on your brush stroke, you could also pick up or remove some of the ink, right? That's another indicator. You don't want to apply too much pressure. This corner. So what questions do we have about the value? Oop, looks like I got my ink off my tape. Any questions so far? Let me zoom out slightly. So that's a good sort of beginning. So we have the plain white, which is the uh, surface of the paper. I didn't add anything to that. One drop, two drop, three, four, and that's uh, plus four, five more. Okay, so that's nine drops. I just jumped ahead so we can start to see. But you can really diversify the value even further. Okay. I also just wanted to add pure black. I'm just going to take my ink, take some of the ink, raw ink itself. I'm going to add not too much water, probably a ratio of, you can start to see that's where the ink is. I'm just going to actually add it without any water. Let me zoom out of the camera. Slightly more. So I'm actually going to add the ink, the last one right around here. Let's go a little bit higher. And right there is the darkest value. And you can start to feel the difference. That is a really big jump, right? What questions do we have, guys, before anything else? No questions? Okay. I'm now, I'm gonna add a little water here to this container. And again, just kind of blending all those preliminary uh, drops that we added before. And I'm just actually gonna put this on the side. And then I'm actually going to move to the next page. If any questions, guys, before I move on? I'm going to allow this value to, to dry a little bit. So I'm going to move my drawing paper to the side. And I do have a prepared paper that's already been um, sort of taped out on the edges. Start to see. And let me actually grab my tape because I need to make the composition smaller. And also grab my ruler. Okay. Now, when you notice the um, the actual drawing or my reference, I should say, excuse me, is a lot wider. Okay, so this is my drawing, right? So what I'm gonna do before I start to add the grid is I'm gonna add more vertical lines, actually, no, excuse me, more horizontal lines on my actual drawing because from the reference, the fre reference seemed a little bit wider. Let me just make sure my camera is good to go, oh, sorry. So 
I'll take my blue painter's tape. Oh, I ran out of tape. Not staying. No. Let me grab some more tape. I'm gonna take my blue painter's tape. Okay. I'm just gonna add about, let's say right about here, roughly. Okay, and again, I'm just cropping the composition even further. Okay, if that makes sense. So like, for example, taking the edge to edge, I should make sure. from both sides, I'm lowering the top and then I'm raising the bottom because again, that composition was a lot um, wider. Now I can change my reference. Again, guys, you're more than happy to change your, your orientation as well as the composition. Meaning, let's say for example, if it's too wide, you know, you can crop the sides to make it fit your 18 by 24 picture plane. Right, that's something that you have to remember. But also, again, I need to also figure out my actual measurements, and that's right around. It's like this is right around twenty, about twenty inches wide. So I'm gonna mark ten. Okay, and just gonna lower this. Just raise my ruler here, and that's also around twenty. Just make sure. Okay. And then I'm just going to add a diagonal line from here to here. Again, I have a 4H pencil that I'm using. Another diagonal line. Okay. I'm going to add a center, a vertical line in the center. Okay. And then a horizontal line in the middle. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to mark my X's on all four sides of each square before I continue. Sure, that's straight. And again, guys, this is why it takes so much time because you want to be able to prepare the drawing clearly and you want to be able to use the grid to your advantage. Okay. I'm going to make a vertical line that runs through here. Another one that runs through here. There's something on here. It's okay, I'll remove it later. Okay. What questions do we have about the grid? Let me zoom in slightly. So all this is negative space. This will all be empty. Okay. 
So then now, now part of this process, again, is to sort of figure out how you want to be able then to tackle the drawing. Now there's multiple ways to do this, okay? There's multiple methods to understanding what you want your drawing to sort of look like, to be represented from the composition, but you really got to take your time and first lay out what is necessary, what is crucial, and how then you can start to then figure out what you need from the actual composition. Meaning, remember my lightest brights are my background, okay? Because I don't have white ink to use, so I need to remember that. I then can add my composition, um, you know, keeping in mind where my brights are, where my darks are, and so on and so forth. But again, for this process, what you can do is, again, just generally, you want to be able to think really loosely. I'm not worrying about any of the details, but I'm just actually going to start adding um, some of the composition with my 4H. But then I can go back with my white eraser and start erasing, okay, after I lay down my first uh, wash. So I'm going to start laying down the composition first, okay? And again, I'm actually going to just add some tape to the four corners of my paper so it doesn't move. I'll actually add it just for the bottom so it doesn't um, fluctuate, which is all right. Okay, so it doesn't move there. So again, I'm looking at the reference as a guide and really just want to start off by just indicating probably right around here where the sort of hillside is. Just really following along, not worrying about too much detail. And that's right around in this square. You can start to see the uh, that log, the larger log where the main character is. And right about here is where that tree is, the base of the tree. And again, um, if you do want to follow along, you can in this process with me but I'll have that uploaded with the uh, completed drawing um, later today. I'm just, again, trying to map out my composition, I'm trying to see how big things are, how wide things are. That's the sort of the base of that sort of stem. Again, guys, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to speak now or any time. Let us turn around here. There's that side tree and the tree is almost at an angle which is interesting that's right about that middle here there's a bit of the those rocky objects there there's a bit of a boulder here too that goes overlaps of that larger rock and there's more trees behind this tree Again, I'm just getting a rough estimate. I'm not worrying about any details. Just need to figure out that length, okay? Now, in the same picture plane, you can also see there is more trees that come out here. 
there's more foliage. I'm just gonna make it like a sort of circle around it, not each individual petal of the that tree, because I don't I don't need that. Because I want to be then be ha have fun with that with my ink. Okay, just adding more of those trees. I might kind of go directly upwards. They kind of blend into the background, which is interesting. So I'll start blending in some of those areas. Now, what's really interesting is right around here is where that sort of the central character is. But that's also where the the base of that um, the branch comes off on that log, where the character is being uh, kind of settled in in the in, in the image. So this comes out slightly downwards and into the water. There's this pool of water down there, and this one kind of ends here to right there. So there's that where's that connection to both that log. You know, it kind of comes up and it comes inwards and it gets foreshortened kind of to get a lot smaller. Now the character, and then um, what the character is writing on his elk. Are you know really roughly made? So I'm just going to roughly just make a smaller sketch of the composition, not worrying about detail, not worrying about any of that. I'm just loosely putting that in there, just almost like a stick figure, because I don't want to worry too much about what the character looks like, how they are. It's almost like a sort of a silhouette. A a sketch of both the elk, okay? And then the uh, actual character. But then behind the character, right around here, and this is where it gets interesting because I, I have to remember that's the lightest white. So I'm gonna start adding some like vertical lines to showcase that's where the waterfall is. It almost like sort of hovers around the character. So right around here, that's my brightest white, I need to remember. But within this sort of picture plane of this square, I can start to see on the bottom half of this corner, this square, there's where all those folds of those rocks are. And the more I go upwards, the different direction it goes and it goes more towards the, um, the right. Okay, so I have a sort of now a good composition here of where this drawing will start to end up. But then now the brush marks on the background, I'm actually gonna leave empty in this sort of negative space. But in this square, I'm gonna start adding more of the tree on the opposite side. So I need to also indicate where that is. But I can also see right around here, this is sort of a blob of a darker shadow of the tree on the right, excuse me, on the left. And it's right about there. And again, I'm just adding a very loose sort of composition, sort of showcase where things are in that sort of relationship. This is where that tree will start to bend and curve. And again, I don't want it to be super exact, but again, just a real sort of rough idea of the value. Okay. Any questions so far, guys? And in that foreground here, there's that rock, the bigger rock. And then there's more rocks here and more sort of where these kind of pebbles, laurels, and these other kind of rocks would be. There's also sort of a pool of water
right around here. All of this will be the reflected water that the character will be on. Okay. And then on this side, this gets slightly more exaggerated, actually. So there's that tree there. There's another one over there. And then it's a little bit difficult to see on the camera. Let me just I'll zoom out slightly. Is that better? Slightly better. Again, I'm just following my grid so we don't make any mistakes. And then I also want to just to indicate that that's where. So halfway around this branch is where this, this branch would be. That overlaps to there. And again, guys, what questions do we have? Any questions so far? And right around here are my forest spirits. Can you guys hear me? I just want to make sure I'm, everybody, everybody can hear me. Are we good? Yes, we hear you. Okay. Perfect. There's the forest spirits. Just making silhouettes. And I'm actually gonna leave them almost white because that's where their sort of uh, values are. Okay, can we see the drawing? I don't know if it's clear here. Oh, let me do this. Actually, let me, I'm gonna zoom in. So then we can start to then see it a little bit clearly. So this is the drawing so far, okay? It's very rough, it's very loose, but it gives you an idea of where things are in the relationships of the drawing. Go over it again. Okay. Everybody see how I got there? Now, this is the fun part. What I'm going to do is actually take my container of clean water. Okay. And I'm actually going to remove some of that water in there. So I don't want too much of water in there. I want about probably, what, two, one ounce, maybe two ounces, depending on uh, your container. I'm gonna take one drop of the ink, okay? And I'm just gonna drop it in there. And that, is my prime, my lightest gray. Okay, I'm gonna blend some of that in there. Now it looks really dark in there. Don't be, don't be scared of that. But even before I actually apply it to my drawing, I can take my paper towel and make a swatch. And I'm actually really happy with that light swatch, okay? Now, when you're working in this process, remember 
you have your paper here, you have your drawing ready to go, you have your composition down, take the paper towel here on the bottom, you know, get it nice and flat. Okay, so when you move your brush constantly back, and if it's holding too much water, you'll then be able then to go back and actually blot it on the paper towel so it doesn't blend too much on the surface. Okay. So I'm going to start adding some value. Okay. Again, I'm starting off with my uh, one drop. I'm using my larger, my uh, larger brush in this process. Okay. Really take, you don't want too much water loaded up on the brush as well. You really want to take your time. Okay. I'm going to just start adding just a slight wash on my composition. I'm not gonna, I don't wanna fill in too much, but I wanna then just to kind of like follow along my, my drawing that I added and then allow that to dry on certain areas. This is, again, this is how you should start really slowly. That's why we have about two, well, we had about two weeks to work on this. Now we have one. Because the more and more I start adding layers, the darker it comes. But you cannot go back because that's a big problem. And notice you can start to see some of the value get in there. I'm really just sort of filling in the space before we kind of get to our middle tones. And I just, again, trying to identify where my value is in relationship to the drawing, but also sort of showcasing where the background is, where the uh, highlights are. I'm not worried about any detail so far. Just going over my silhouette of my character. Again, I'm not worrying about detail. I'm just trying to fill in, fill in both the animal and then the, uh, the human. And you cover a lot of the ground by using the side of the brush, okay? You can see I'm using the side of the brush here on the larger tree. Again, kind of value here. Just kind of fill in that space. Now you can in, these, uh, in this process to erase all your pencil marks after the first layer is dry, so remember that, you can start erasing your pencil marks after the first layer is fully dry, okay? But for this demo, we're gonna see how far we can go by just actually adding less the means of the paper, excuse me, of the pencil, or I should say keeping the paper uh, of that pencil on the surface, but then going back and then adding more layers. Yeah, and so this is where I want to be really loose. You know, we want to have sort of fun kind of filling in some of those areas of the trees. Just say, oh, okay, that's where that value is. This is where this value is. Going around my shadows. Blob blobbing some of those areas in. And the magic really happens once we add another layer, because again, in those stages, you really want to have to be really, really patient. You can start to then examine more and more of the actual drawing further throughout this process. You can go over this whole layer. What questions do we have, guys? Now, I'm adding a lot of water, too. That's another thing to keep in mind. How does it look? 
So it's pretty wet, obviously. You can start to see all that reflection of the light that's coming up from above. Now, I have my container. Any questions before I move on? Okay. I'm gonna take the container and just put it on the side. Do you remember our first container with the smaller brush? I'm gonna start to see here is where I'm gonna start adding more value. But I'm first, I need to drop and um, remove some of this ink because that's contaminated with too much dark shadow. So I don't need all that so far. So I'm gonna spill this in my bathroom sink and just rinse it under some, uh, some water so I can have it nice and clean. So give me one second. Okay, I then want to be able then to have some clean water in here, clear, clean my brush, make sure there isn't any cross contamination, too much ink. Okay, but then now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I need to wait for some of those areas to dry to give you guys an idea. Let me zoom out. Can you guys see that? Is it difficult to see? I know it's a little blurry or a little too shiny. I wonder if I turn off the light, hold on. Is that better or worse? I think that made it worse. Notice also too, your paper starts to buckle. It starts to actually move and kind of get too crinkly on the surface. That is okay. It will dry flat as long as your paper is flat and taped down on all four sides of the edges, okay? What I'm now gonna do, I'm gonna move actually to three drops. That's one, two, actually let's go to, let's just go to two. Cause I wanna go, I wanna go slowly. I don't wanna jump too hard, uh, too fast, okay? I have my two drops. And I'm gonna make a swatch on my paper towel first. Mm, it's actually too close. I'm gonna add another drop. Let's see how that is. This is what you wanna do. You take your container, you add it, a drop at a time, don't add too much. I'm gonna add another drop actually to get it a little bit darker. Okay, this is good. So then now, I want to see how that looks on my paper because again I want to gradually add a little bit at a time I don't want to jump to way too dark I'm going to go over some of these areas and I you can start to see it actually becomes a lot darker so then I can start adding some more uh, texture and I'm going to like start adding some different brush strokes, like for example, this is the water. Water. I notice my brush stroke, I'm moving it in a different direction. Okay. Now, for example, if I, let's say for example, if I added too much, you, this is how you can erase. You take a clean side of your paper towel and quickly remove all of that before it dries. All of that will come up on the paper towel. Okay. Now, if I go over those areas uh, that I had here with some value, you can start to see, I can then blend in some of those areas much more clearly. 
And again, this is what I want to do. I want to be able to just, again, gradually add some value at a time. You don't want to jump. I see a lot of students actually uh, leaping over their drawings and actually working too fast. You really want to take your time. And you notice here, remember when we added uh, like barely any pencil marks on the background here, I'm actually going to take my brush and start filling in the composition with the brush, with my smaller brush, to kind of indicate that's where some of those areas are. Because then it'll start to recede into the background. And that's what you want. You want that depth of atmospheric perspective, right? Meaning that the further away, the more uh, less saturated they are, the closer they are, the darker and more saturated they become. Let's see now, I can start adding more um, value on this side, but then notice it gets a lot darker. But I just have to be mindful. You don't want it to add too much water. You really gotta take your time and start just gradually adding water, not too much, but not, um, and you, you don't want to uh, do this very uh, fast. You really got to take your time, kind of fill in some of those areas before you add your darks. And again, I just need to be mindful of where my darks are, where my lights are. You don't want to rush this process, guys. I see a lot of students always rush this beginning half of the drawing. This is where you want to have that sort of meditative process. Have fun, you know, gradually start adding value. Don't rush it. Notice it's starting to get darker, which is fantastic. Start to see, I think, all that surface of those textures of the trees around here. Again, these early processes, guys, it looks like a mess, but you really want to just focus, just take your time, remember where those values were, remember how those shadows are, where are those deeper red, uh, deeper darks, those deeper uh, lights, and so on and so forth. You really got to take your time and really just have fun, to be honest with you. How does this look on the computer? Still a little difficult to see. Uh, any questions so far? Okay. I'm now going to add more drops to my container. Now, really, at these stages, you really have to wait for it to dry because you'll start to see once you add too much of the ink, it starts to bleed. You want to control where your values are so they don't spread. Really, you know, take my advice and start um, waiting for this area to dry and then come back to it later, a few, a few minutes later. But for the demo, I'll just try to speed up this process. I'm gonna add four more drops. That's one, two, three, four, okay. To my same container. I want to see how that value is. I'm going to add two more, just a bit. Two more. That's one, two. Just the camera. 
Now I'm going to work on this side here specifically. Is that better guys? Can you guys see that clearly? I don't know if that's better or if that's worse, if it's like easy to see. Let me know if it is. Okay. So then now I'm gonna start filling in this area, the trees. Now this is about six more drops. Some of that texture on the trees. Again, guys, this will take a lot of time. So you got to really plan out your schedules to see how much time this does take. Again, you want to be able to make these mistakes first before you tackle more of the drawing. I don't think Ashi, uh, Ashitaka, I think that's his name, is a little bit darker on this uh, right hand side. Blending. I'm not going to add too much. Shadow here, that rock here. Can you guys start to see that? Is that a little bit clearer? Yeah. Add more value here on the background. Again, the more value I start to add, the more it gets sort of it gets easier to sort of see where my lights are, where my darks are. Where the waterfall will be, so I have these like bolder sh uh, strokes of the um, ink. Branches. And here's all that textured. Now notice in the, that area of the image, there's that the tree where all those branches are and all those leaves. I'm gonna actually start adding some more texture. I'm just blotting the brush slightly just to make some marks. And I'm actually gonna use that as a guide to fill in the space. And then we get that really nice sort of textured surface of the tree. I want Ashitaka to be the highlight around that wall, wallpaper, excuse me, about the uh, waterfall, not wallpaper. <laughs> I don't want it to be too much water. I just want to gradually, because I don't want it to bleed too much, which just happened right now, which is okay. Some of those lines to sort of indicate that's where the waterfall comes down. You guys, let me know if I go too fast, okay? Here. 
here. And I'm again, just building upon that texture. I think with even uh, these areas, you can actually actually go back and then later on and see how that, when you erase after this layer dries, how the pencil mark should be actually be a lot easier to pick up. Building upon this texture. And I just wanted to show that diversity of texture, of modeling, of kind of figuring out what's working on the drawing, what's not working on the drawing. And you know, I'm being cautious about like what, what can I add, what can I subtract? It's because this is a layering process. You don't want to add too much in the beginning. Add some more foliage here. And I'm actually going to use this as a sort of value, kind of blend in some of those textures of the rocks, bottom of the tree. I get that really nice rich texture from those marks that we made earlier. But then now I'm gonna do something really dramatic and hopefully it doesn't bleed too much on the surface. I want to be, then be able then to go back. I'm actually going to just fill in some of these pools of water. You can start to see those blots of water. When you when that happens, just take your brush while it's somewhat dry or somewhat wet, kind of blend in some of those areas because that's going to dry dark, really dark actually. The elk. There you go. You get that nice sort of even consistency. And I'm trying to build upon like that surface quality. I want to be able then to kind of go back and then start adding more variations of value on that side. Some of those leaves. Of the water, you can start to see there's kind of an interesting texture on the bottom of the the uh, log where it almost is like this dried moss or this wet moss, I should say, comes off that surface. And I want to get that nice sort of texture, kind of making it look like, like uh, it's like looping downwards, which is kind of interesting. Okay. But also, like for example, add some paper towel to remove some of the water so it can dry faster. And I've seen students actually use the paper towel to make texture like this, which is kind of fun. But then you can just take some of the drier areas of the paper towel and kind of remove again more to see what happens. Okay. How does this look on your guys' end? Is it easy to read? Let's zoom out. Let me actually, let me do this, let me zoom in. You see that so far? Yes. So we have the main character. I know it looks very abstract at this stage. You can start to see the development of the landscape. Now if I zoom out, you can see again, how much richer this side is with value. Here, it's much more duller, okay? It's another thing. I'm gonna continue working on this side. Just make sure the camera doesn't move, okay? Now, again, I'm gonna do something a bit extreme. I'm gonna remove some of the water here. Actually, just add it to this container. Or actually, you know what? I'm gonna remove all this water, just not too much. And I have about that much left, very little. Remove a little bit more. There you go. So it's very small, very minute. I'm gonna take my bigger brush and actually leave it in there. And I'm gonna take my smaller brush and put it in here. 
really you want your smaller brush to be your detailed brush. So we'll just drop that a drop of water here. Just want to hurry up and pick it up. Um, you want your smaller brush for, to be where all your details are. But what I'm now going to do is actually go really dark. So I'm going to take my droplet. I'm going to add 10 drops and you'll see how dark this becomes. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to add too much water. Okay. But this is a pretty dark shadow, as you get, you will see. Now, if I make blot it with the paper towel, that's a pretty dark value. So I need to be very careful in this stage. Okay. What do I mean by this? Again, you want to just gradually add some value to the darker sides. Just zoom in on that area. Okay. And again, guys, you might have an accident with, uh, when you have ink on your counters. Just quickly, while it's still wet, take some paper towel, a dry paper towel, and clean that up. Now I'm just going to blot it so I don't want too much ink on there because if it does have too much ink, it starts to spread. Excuse me, too much water, not ink. I apologize. start adding some value. You see that? Now this almost fills in some of that space, which is great. I need to also look at Ashitaka's um, body in terms of its composition. I'm zooming in carefully so I can start to see um, how the elk's horns, but then the actual body I'm just adding value. That's all I'm doing. Okay. Now it's a little bit easier to see. Zoom out slightly. And now start filling in the bottom half of the rocks. You can see that's pretty dark, right? But you have to be very cautious not to bleed some of those areas, meaning going over. Okay. There's almost a shadow of black here. And that's because of the contrast adjustment we did. We see the tree now. Is it easier to see? These values here. So 
run over these areas with more texture, building upon that foliage. I don't want to go over Ashitaka's um, body yet or his elk. Just gradually down here because again, I'm just building upon the texture. Yeah, guys, this should be a very slow meditative process. You really want to take your time. I'm going to add five more drops to the same container. Oop. Actually, more. It was more than five. Excuse me. It looks like it's just all spilled in there. It's okay. See how dark that looks? That's great. Again, you could always hold the paper towel, clean off some of those edges. This is really dark. Now I'm going really quickly, but really you want to take your time and start building more value uh, a lot slower than what I'm doing right now, because you don't want it to mess up the, not only the composition, but like go too dark and then you won't be able to go back later on.
Let's see how that looks from a distance. How does that look? Can you guys see it now? Yes. Okay. And so what questions do we have at this stage? Um, um, after, after we, we go, 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 go from the, go from the layer values, do we, do we, when, 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 when do we blend in dark, some of the dark, dark values? When do we blend in the dark values? Yeah. You really have to say, Austin, I would wait for some of those areas to dry first and then go from there when you add more darks. You can start to see, like I just added and blotted some paper towels here. Look how much ink came off. That's a lot, right? Because there's a lot of water. Um, you really want to take your time. And this is why we have such, um, we need such patience at this stage is because you don't want to rush any of this process. Um, but throughout this iteration of this assignment, you really gotta practice with your time preliminary drawings um, and see how you get comfortable with it. So there's another doc, uh, demonstration from um, under the modules tab where we go over the timed uh, preliminary drawings um, first before you get into your actual final drawing, which is this, this one here. Um, I'll, I'm going to wait for this to dry because it's actually very, very wet. You can start to see the, the paper kind of bowing and curving. And I need to come back to it a little bit later.